1978 proved to be another championship year for the Clemson Tigers. It was the kind of year that all young men dream of. To be number one. To proudly wear those championship rings. Clemson raced to a perfect 6-0 league record to claim the school's seventh Atlantic Coast Conference Championship. More than any other ACC school. Vaulted to number seven in the national polls with a 10-1 record. And accepted its ninth bowl appearance to face Ohio State in the Gator Bowl. The championship season was truly Saturday afternoon fever wherever the Tigers play. Clemson opened the season at home against the Citadel, and Billy Lott, heir apparent to Steve Fuller's quarterback spot, hands off to Harold Goggins from tailback, and behind great blocking by Hudson and King, Goggins goes down the left sidelines for a 42-yard scoring run and falls just inside the end zone marker. Cindy McDowell to lead the Tiger cheers. Citadel now on offense. Quarterback Tim Russell moving left, lofting a pass. But it's picked off in the end zone by Eddie Gethers. Linebacker Bubba Brown comes up to greet the Tigers' newest hero. Mary Hill loves Tiger defense. Villanova comes into Death Valley for the first meeting against the Tigers since 1952. J.D. Haglin in motion, Steve Fuller rolls right, hands off to Lester Brown, who's moving left, picks up a block from Billy Hudson, another from Jeff Bostick, breaks through two tacklers, and goes in for the score. And Lester exhibits that rubber duck shuffle. That's a happy group of Tigers celebrating in the end zone. It's Tiger Zach Mills. Here you'll see Jim Stuckey crash through with help from Rex Barn and John Brooks throw Wildcat tailback Dana Shelton for a four-yard loss. And the rest of the Tiger defense there for the kick. At the Villanova 5, Fuller riding the ball to Marvin Sims, lets the big fullback keep, and he goes over right tackle for the score. Lester Brown, the first player to greet Sims in the end zone. By the threatening day, 47,000 showed up for the Villanova game. From ground level now, Villanova quarterback Pat O'Brien fading the pass, but Chip Pruitt and freshman Jeff Bryant throw the Wildcats' signal caller for a six-yard loss. Tommy Brown hoists Cindy McDowell. And the crowd reacts. In the homecoming game against Virginia Tech, Dwight Clark in motion to the left. Fuller fakes to Tracy Perry, then keeps on the option around the right side. A key blocked by Chris Dolce gets Fuller started upfield in front of the VPI bench. Fuller cuts left between two Hokie defenders, gets a final block from Rumi Cliff Bray, and goes 75 yards to score on the second play of the game. Hey, man, don't kill me. Tiger Paws waving in the breeze during homecoming. Perry Tuttle in motion to the left side. Fuller dropping back. Hits All-America Jerry Butler over the middle and watch this. Surrounded by five VPI players at the 40, Butler sidesteps one, dodges three more at the 45, and finally taken down after a 32-yard gain. A great individual effort. And that same play now on isolation. This is how All-Americans are made. TV against the Hokies, Fuller fakes the Sims, pitches to Lester Brown, going right, the Myrtle Beach Jr. goes in for the score from four yards out, and the Clemson Tigers lead it, 17 to nothing. And happy about this one. All-conference linebacker Randy Scott crashes through the VPI line, puts pressure on quarterback Steve Casey, and middle guard Rich Tootin polishes off the gobbler ball carrier with this seven-yard sack. 
Tigers now in punt formation at their own 25. David Sims to do the kicking. He zooms the ball 61 yards. And while it bounces around, BPI deep back Nick Rapone touches it. Rick Wyatt falls on the ball for the Tigers. Shows his passing accuracy as he threads the needle in a roll to the left, hits tight end Cliff Gray, making a spectacular catch just in front of two Gobbler defenders. It's a seven-yard TD. Tribulation in that Tiger end zone and the stands as well. The Tigers go on the road for their first Atlantic Coast Conference game at Virginia. On the first play from scrimmage, Fuller pitches back to Lester Brown, who sweeps right, goes between two Cavalier defenders on a shield block by Dwight Clark, gets a crushing block from Marvin Sims, cuts back to the center of the field, and gets a final block from Jerry Butler to complete a 59-yard touchdown play. And the rubber duck shuffle is back in style. As usual, a large Clemson crowd following their team. It's the Tigers on defense now. Cavalier quarterback Mickey Spady rolls left, but Steve Gibbs comes crashing in from his defensive end spot and throws Spady for a yard loss. The crowd urges him to push him back. Steve Fuller from quarterback again. A flip to Lester Brown, who sweeps right, gets key blocks from Eric Young. Converted guard Anthony King and tight end Cliff Gray cuts left between four Cavalier defenders and goes in from 15 yards out for the TD. His second of the day. Brown had the best day of his career against the Cavs. He gained 178 yards. Brown sees what they came for. Cavaliers trying to get something started now. Defensive tackle Steve Durham, though, breaks through to throw Virginia quarterback Mickey Spady for a four-yard loss. Steve Bryan and Bobby Goldberg give Durham some deserved congratulations. There's a couple of young Tiger fans. Now it's back home again in Death Valley against the Duke Blue Devils. At the Duke 32-yard line, Fuller with a handoff to Marvin Sims, who follows Anthony King and Chris Dolsey through a big hole and blasts 21 yards to the Duke 11-yard line. Now, Steve Fuller at quarterback dives to the end zone from the two on a fourth down play, and it gives the Tigers a 7-0 lead in the first quarter. Big hooray for Steve Fulton. Duke quarterback Mike Dunn fading the pass. Fires long for Derek Lewis. But Willie Jordan picks it off at the 14, avoids a tackler at the 10, gets key blocks from Ryan, Willie Underwood, and Rich Tootin, and Steve Gibbs. The return good for 37 yards. Oh, a happy young lady. Bad exchange between Mike Dunn and Ned Gonnett results in a fumble. Middle guard Charlie Bauman there to pounce on the ball for the Tigers. Bauman congratulated by his defensive teammates as they leave the field. Their mission completed on this trip. to NC State, where both Clemson and the Wolf Pack are in the thick of the ACC race. Playing before a full house and a regional TV audience, Pack quarterback Scott Smith tries the end around to Lynn Dust. Tony Williams slows him down, and Bubba Brown finishes the kill for a three-yard loss. I think Bubba's happy. It's making a happy look at this photo. Now Steve Fuller to bark signals. Fades, finds Jerry Butler in the clear over the middle. The All-America split receiver makes a diving catch on the play that gains 24 yards down to the Wolfpack four. Two plays later, the same combination works again as Fuller rolls left, spots Butler three in the left end zone, and the Tigers have another touchdown with six seconds left in the half. 
Butler comes over, places the ball at the base of the goalpost support. Over 5,100 fans followed the Tigers to Raleigh that day. Steve Fuller now on a pitch to Lester Brown, who sweeps left, takes a block from Chris Dolce, scampers uncontested into the end zone, capping a 64-yard drive. And watch a new wrinkle to the rubber duck shuffle. Zach Mills with more push-ups. State All-America Ted Brown takes this pitch from Scott Smith. John Brooks comes crashing through with help from Jim Stuckey and Bubba Rollins. Brown dropped for a five-yard loss. Now Scott Smith rolls right for the Wolfpack, throws right into the arms of Clemson strong safety Bubba Rollins. This interception gives the Tigers a first down at their own 33. Seven Tigers give Rollins an escort off the field. Later on, State on offense again, 4th and 12 at the Clemson 13. Scott Smith fading, but a big rush is put on by Jim Stuckey and Tony Williams to chase Scott out of the pocket. Additional pressure by Bauman. Scott passes Rex Barnes, steps in front of the intended receiver, then goes untouched 94 yards for a Clemson touchdown. This interception return gives Barnes the interception return yardage record at Clemson University. Next week, it was Wake Forest and Winston-Salem. Steve Fuller fakes to Tracy Perry, rolls left, gets protection from Jeff and Joe Bostic, Billy Hudson, and Chris Dolce, and passes complete to Anthony King down the left sideline. This play covers 25 yards, setting up the first Tiger touchdown. And here it is with Lester Brown diving over one yard away. Salem, too. For the Deacon 42, Fuller fakes to Tracy Perry, rolls left, hits Perry Tuttle at the 18. He sidesteps three Deacon defenders and goes into the end zone just inside the marker for his first touchdown of the year. His 42-yard touchdown came before his hometown admirers. Now, Fuller fakes to Marvin Sims into the line. Then drops back to his right. Throws a perfect strike to Dwight Clark. And he makes a spectacular catch among a host of Deacons for a 15-yard touchdown reception. Time for Tiger Rag. Deacon quarterback David Weber rolls left, but defensive end Bobby Goldberg comes in from the blind side untouched, and Weber's down for a 10-yard loss. Clemson second and third teamers in the game now. Quarterback Mike Gaskew pitches to Cliff Austin. Behind a good block by Ron West, Austin goes in for the final Clemson score on this 15-yard dash around the right side. Congratulated by Mark Thornton, Bubba Diggs, Bill Smith, and a brave. Majorettes lead the band along the sidelines. The Tigers return home before another capacity plus crowd to face North Carolina. Steve Streeter, North Carolina punter, back to await the snap. And hits a 50-yarder. Willie Jordan gathers in at the Tiger 30, makes his move to the right, Gets a block from Rex Barn. Another with the 38 by Jeff Sewell and Matt Smith and Jordan finally hauled down after a 42-yard return. sets the crowd to buzzing. 
punt return set up this field goal by Obita Reary. And it sails high and true from 46 yards out. And the cheerleaders just as high as the kick runs. Famous Amos Lawrence of the Tar Heels goes off tackle where he's hit by all ACC defensive tackle Jim Stuckey and all league linebacker Bubba Brown. They force a fumble that's recovered by defensive end Steve Gibbs. The crowd says, we don't mess with that. Now at the Tiger 35, Fuller back, fakes to Lester Brown, threads the ball to Jerry Butler between three North Carolina defenders, and it's a 24-yard game. Fuller comes off the ball at the Tar Heel 29, trailing 9 to 6, fakes to Perry, pitches to Lester Brown, who circles right end, scampers 21 yards to the North Carolina 8. It's another Tiger first down. Four plays later. Lester Brown goes off left tackle to score. Loses his jersey in the process, then hands the ball off to Chris Dolce, and he gives his version of the rubber duck shuffle. And again, the fans celebrate. Matt Kubek, Tar Heel quarterback. Faces a second and ten at the Tiger 32, but as he drops the pass, sacked for a five-yard loss by Jim Stuckey, Bubba Brown, and Tony Williams. On the next play, under pressure from Gibbs, Williams, Stuckey, Bauman, and Brooks, Kupek throws the ball, but Bubba steps in front of the intended receiver at the 30, makes a return of 38 yards before he's brought down. Clemson ran out the clock and gained a 13-9 victory. on to Maryland where the conference championship will be decided. The battle of the undefeated. Another capacity plus crowd. The sixth of over 50,000. Tiger band among the many thousands on hand. Maryland on offense. Turf quarterback Tim O'Hare fades as he rolls right. Finds no receivers open. His drop for a seven-yard loss by Jonathan Brooks and Tony Williams. Now O'Hare passes laterally behind the line of scrimmage to Steve Atkins. But Bubba Rollins from strong safety and defensive end Steve Gibbs get the drift of the play there to throw Atkins for a three-yard loss. On the worth that 600-mile trip. Training 14 to 7. From the 13, after getting the ball at the 2, facing 2nd and 10, Fuller pulls out, rolls left, passes complete to Jerry Butler at the 28, between three Maryland defenders. From then on, it's no contest, just the Jerry Butler show. And then this Butler interpretation of the rubber, Duck Shuffle. Mobbed by his teammates, and the Tigers have drawn even 14-0. falling behind again, this time 21-14. Fuller goes to the air again. Drops straight back, hits Dwight Clark, who makes a sensational catch at the Maryland 45, again between three defenders, then the Dwight Clark show. And a rock a version in the end zone. Tiger fans going well. Maryland flanker Dean Richards comes around, takes a pitch from quarterback, intends to throw the halfback option, but Randy Scott blitzes while Bubba Brown and Tony Williams put the kill on Richards for an 11-yard loss. Bubba indicated it, the Tigers are number one. Now on the winning touchdown drive, Marvin Sims takes the handoff from Fuller behind almost perfect trap play blocking, blasts up the middle for an 11-yard gain to the Maryland five-yard line. Very next play, Fuller fakes to Sims, 
sucks in the entire Maryland line, then pitches to Lester Brown, who sweeps right, dashes the last five yards to score. It caps a 10-play, 70-yard drive for the winning touchdown. A 28-24 victory, the ACC championship, and a bid to the Gator Bowl. Not a bad afternoon. Back home for the grand finale against South Carolina. As the Tigers come down the hill, led by Clemson President Dr. Robert C. Evans. The largest crowd ever to see a game between Philadelphia and Birmingham, over 63,000 people. Warren Ratchford sets the tone of the day for the Tigers. He gathers in the opening kickoff at the three, and following key blocks by Jeff Sewell, Willie Jordan, and Willie Underwood, returns 42 yards to the Clemson 45-yard line. Time blocks by Billy Hudson, Chris Dolsey, and Ed Abreu. Lester Brown goes off tackle, and the junior tailback gobbles up 13 more yards. Six plays later, Steve Fuller dives over center Jeff Bostic for the game's first score from the one-yard line. Here's some of the record-setting crowd. On the ensuing kickoff, Zion McKinney back to gather it in for South Carolina. Comes out, is decked by Gary Webb, causing a fumble, and Rick Wyatt comes from nowhere, recovers for the Tigers. It's first down Clemson at the game dot 35. Fuller now fakes to Tracy Perry. Then follows Joe Bostic sweeping right on another touchdown drive. And the senior quarterback heats up 21 yards before he's brought down at the Clemson 41-yard line. Later in that same drive, Tracy Perry capped a 93-yard scoring drive. A hitting right tackle behind blocks by Steve Kenny, Joe Bostic, and Anthony King. Goes in from seven yards out to score. And the Tigers lead it 28-14, to still in the first half. Carolina quarterback Gary Harper tries a desperation pass with less than a minute to play in the half, but that ball intercepted by Rex Barn at the Tiger 30, behind blocks by Steve Gibbs and Jonathan Brooks. He returns 39 yards to the South Carolina 32 with three seconds remaining. Just enough time for over the Rury to kick a 49-yard field goal. Lester Brown having another of his 100-yard-plus games. Here he goes off right tackle behind a block by Anthony King to score. It's his 17th touchdown of the season. Back in the Gator Bowl for a second straight year. Thousands upon thousands of orange-clad Clemson fans made the journey to Jacksonville to see their Tigers take on the Buckeyes of Ohio State. Some of the Clemson faithful were in the stands over two and a half hours before kickoff. The Tigers, 98 strong, came out of their dressing room single file, led by quarterback Steve Fuller. This was the night the team had looked forward to for a year. The game plan was set. Players had sharpened their attack. Over 72,000 in the stands and millions more on national TV could not penetrate their thoughts as the cheerleaders danced around with the 50 by 90 foot flag. Fuller and Randy Scott were to step forward for the coin toss.
The chat is for defense, defense, as the Buckeyes edge close to the Tiger goal. Ohio State just two yards away, and quarterback Arch Leister pitches to Rick Foley, but he is hit by Willie Underwood at the two, who gets help from Bubba Brown and Denny Gathers, and Tony Williams signals first down Tigers. Now Clemson on the offense. Fuller rolls left, and behind good protection, passes complete to Jerry Butler for 13 yards. Second and goal from the four. Fuller fakes right to Sims, keeps rolls left, makes a complete 360 turn on the goal line, goes in for the Tigers' score, and Steve trotting off the field, happy to have his Tigers ahead. And the cheerleaders urge that crowd on. Ohio State now has the ball at the Tiger 44. Arch Schleister fakes up the middle, nailed by a blitzing Randy Scott for a loss of four. Head coach Danny Ford listens to instructions from the press box at the Clemson 47. Fuller riding the ball off to Marvin Sims behind Chris Dolsey, Billy Hudson, and Jeff Bostick. Sims breaks one, two, three tackles and pulls his way 12 yards for a first down. Now Fuller fakes to Sims. This time pitches left to tailback Warren Ratchford, who keeps his balance, tight ropes down the sidelines for a 14-yard gain. Another crucial Tiger first down. From the 11, Steve Fuller rolls right, wants to pass, but sees a clear field ahead, dashes up the middle for 10 yards to the Ohio State one-yard line. Freshman Cliff Austin dives over right tackle for what proves to be the winning touchdown. It caps an 84-yard drive, eats up over seven minutes on the clock. That score makes a lot of people happy. After Ohio State had pulled it within 17-15, the Buckeyes tried for two. But as Arch Schleister sweeps left, Eddie Gethers wipes out the lead blocker, leaving a clear shot for all ACC tackle Jim Stuckey, who stops the Buckeye quarterback at the two. And it brings much elation to the Tiger sideline. Ohio State comes back to the Clemson 24 in the last two minutes. Schleister fading the pass, but a big Tiger rush forces him to scramble. Charlie Bauman intercepts the pass, and it seals the Clemson victory. It was a great night for celebrating for all Tigers, but especially for 30-year-old Danny Ford, who had just 24 days before the Gator Bowl, been thrust to the forefront by being named Clemson's 21st head coach. A big hug from All-America guard Joe Bostic, and Ford is hoisted on the shoulders of his players and carried to midfield to accept the championship trophy of the Gator Bowl. Steve Fuller was named recipient of the Burkhalter Award, emblematic of the game's most valuable player. Clemson's ninth postseason bowl game had been a success and was the whipped cream of a 12-layer cake where everyone shared in the victory party. The triumph gave Clemson 10 consecutive wins, the longest winning streak of any major team in the nation. With that final 11-1 record, the Tigers were ranked sixth in the nation in the final poll of both wire services, the highest Clemson finish ever. And although a record 10 Clemson players earned first-team All-ACC honors in 1978, it was a total team effort that brought the title to Tiger Town. An average of 57 players saw action in each game. 28 team and individual school records were established during the regular season. All existing attendance records were shattered. Over 600,000 fans saw the Tigers play in 1978, with 322,000 witnessing the six home games, an average of 53,699 a game. 1978 was just one more exciting chapter in a great Clemson football tradition in what is college football at its finest. And many of those players who brought Clemson its seventh ACC championship will return next year to form the nucleus for another outstanding team. But 1978 will go down as one of the finest in Clemson history. A season where Saturday afternoon fever was the disease that everybody wanted and went out of their way to catch. Tiger paws littered the highways from Maryland to Florida, and orange became the only color in the rainbow. The fall of 78, a championship season in every respect for players, coaches, and fans.